It's called Blackbird. And it's a production by Transgressive North and Deer Stoker Films. And it will star Andrew Rothney, Norman MacLean and, of course, Patrick Wallace. Uh, it's, a, it's a film about traditions fading away to modern life in uh, Roden's uh, hometown. And uh, Alec, who's played by Norman MacLean, has no desire to fight the change. And Rowan fights, tries to fight the change, but ends up the one who needs saved. It's in for the Michael Powell Award. And as, as I say, it will be premiering at the Edinburgh Film, film Festival on Tuesday. Tuesday with another screening on Thursday and uh, both screen screenings I will tell you right now have been sold out. Right, we'll be speaking to one of its stars uh, who's uh, actually based here in West Fife. Uh, you may have heard of him before on Radio West Fife um, talking about streetlights under the guise of streetlights but now it's time for the actor's hat, Patrick Wallace and uh, I was speaking to him earlier this morning and I started by asking him how did he become involved in Blackbird? Well, I was in a bit of a, I, I don't know, I suppose I'd just been uh, rejected from a drama school and I wanted to kind of prove to myself that I could still do something with acting and so I was searching for ages about potential auditions and jobs and um, a, a job for a part in Rowan the Bard as it was called at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed online and I just applied for an audition never thinking anything of it and uh, I got a recall uh, and then I got the part of Callum, um, Rowan's best friend. So I was over the moon. It was a complete surprise. Um, I didn't have any plans for the summer, but then before I knew it, I was off to the Isle of Whithorn to suit for six weeks. So quite a surprise, but a very good one. A great surprise. And uh, obviously you, you had no serious expectations about getting the role at all. So this was uh, an audition that you did your best at and then you never thought thought anything else of it after that. Yeah, completely so. Um I thought it was a great addition. I had a good time, but I wasn't expecting to be to be up for the part. No, definitely not. Just describe to us the moment when you, uh, the, the exact moment when you actually found out that you got the role of Callum. I was sitting in my flat in Glasgow, and uh, I received an email um, that was offering me the part of Callum, and I just screamed <laughs> um, like a little girl. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was very happy. I, just, I phoned everyone closest to me and I got very excited. So just describe us, uh, describe to us your uh, character, Callum. Well, I think Callum's a great character, obviously. I'm going to be biased. Um, but he's he's Rowan's best friend, long-term kind of childhood best friend. And uh, he's a very laid-back guy. But, um, whilst everyone in his, well, in his year group, I suppose, and all his friends are going off to uni in Edinburgh and Glasgow, uh, Callum's... Callum isn't going to uni. He could because he's bright, but he doesn't want to. He wants to stay in the village. And uh, he he's fixing up an old car, and he wants to drive it to Spain, um, which obviously doesn't sit well with Rowan, who mm-hmm. wants to stay in the village all his life. Um, and I suppose, from Callum's perspective, it's all about how what Rowan's doing to himself and doing to the village has an impact on Callum. I suppose Callum's there to kind of be the, the reassuring presence that Rowan needs to do film. And uh, when you said fixing up a car in Spain, I believe you learnt, learnt some skills in uh, being a car mechanic. Uh, well, I wouldn't say I'm a fully really qualified car <laughs> mechanic, but I certainly had to take bits out and put bits back in and pretend like I knew what I was doing. So what was the car that you had to fix up? It was a 1970s Nissan Micra. What would you say is the most memorable experience of filming that you've had? Oh, wow. Um... I'm not allowed to give away any spoilers. Right, uh, okay. So that automatically takes away answer number one. But um, just being there, I suppose, I know that sounds like a very generalised answer, but mm-hmm. it's such a beautiful part of the world. Um, because normally tourists don't go to Whithorn or the Isle of Whithorn because it's to the bottom left of Scotland and people coming out from England just go straight up. Mm-hmm. And they never think just to turn left and go and see some of the scenery that's around there. And just being able to film around such a beautiful area and work with such a great cast um, and become part of a really, really lovely community, I suppose. It was it was an incredible experience and I'll never forget it. And you mentioned that you were working with a fantastic cast. Now, we, you you obviously have in the cast as well uh, Norman MacLean and Sheila Stewart. So just yeah. tell us, what was it what was it like to work with these uh, figures? It was incredible. Um, such characters with so many stories and um, Norman was always keen to give me a lesson in Gaelic and... Um, Oh, it was it was incredible, and they're so talented as well. Um, Stuart and Margaret uh, Bennett 
singing is incredible. Um, I suppose that's what that's the essence of the film. You know, it's about Scotland's tradition and its poetry and its heritage and how it's so important that we don't let that die. And to be around figures like that, um, I mean, I think it made the whole cast realise the, the importance of what the film was about as well. It was invaluable. And you did mention that Norman McLean was uh, trying to give you lessons in uh, Gaelic. How how good is your Gaelic? It's pretty poor. It's, it's very poor. I can understand what you're saying sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll have to brush up. But no, it, it was fantastic working with a guy like Norman. He's some character. He's very, very funny. Many of us we don't we don't understand uh, how grueling and demanding a film shoot can be. Uh, how demanding is it to be on a low budget movie shoot uh, from an actor's perspective? Um, well, I, I wasn't I wasn't involved in filming as much as some of the other, as, as the other characters. You know, Andy Rothney plays Rowan. Um, yeah, some job. You know, he was basically filming every day, and we were, both, we were doing uh, we were doing lots of interesting stunts and. Uh, I don't know. For me, uh, a challenge was not filming all the time. You know, I was I was having to do a lot of wait around and um, and kind of prepare myself for the next scene, whenever that would be, and not knowing quite when I'd be needed. Which it was it was good. It was a very good lesson for me. You know, um, but I suppose when you are on when you are on set, it's all about keeping focused. And it could be really cold. You know, we were filming some scenes that three, four, five in the morning, you know, and mm-hmm. then having to get up at seven to catch a sunrise or something. And so it's, it's a demanding test on the body, but it's, supposed, it's just all about knowing when you can rest and when's a good time to stay awake and how to keep yourself occupied. Um, but it was made so easy by such a lovely casting crew. And uh, I, I know that we've had uh, conversations privately about um, how you kept yourself busy uh, between the um, filming and so forth. How do you keep yourself busy? Uh, what is essentially, when you're not filming, is essentially a waiting game. Um, well, I did, uh, I did a lot of running in my arms because weather was so good. We had fantastic weather for six weeks, um, which was unbelievable. Um, and I... Uh, I did. A, uh, I obviously did a lot of character preparation. You know, I had the script, so I could go through and learn lines and mm-hmm. uh, think about my scripts and stuff. Um, I did some baking. <laughs> you did some baking. I did some baking. Yeah, I'm making mean carrot cake. Um, but no, I, and but they were always really good. You know, I could always go up and watch some film, and even scenes I weren't in. And the cast and crew always ate together as well, so I always had things to do. It wasn't like I was left alone. Um, and Wimbledon was on as well, so you know if I was so that's I had a plus. Time, I had, if I had some time, I could watch Murray get beat. Fantastic, fantastic. So that's always a plus. What was it like to be behind the camera and seeing your colleagues uh, filming? What What's that like? It's really cool. Um, I learned a lot, you know, because uh, I was only eighteen at the time. You know, I'd never, I'd never done a full feature film, but to, to be able to watch everyone in front of the camera who had more experience than me, you know, I, I learned a lot from um, just from watching and just from being around a film, a film set because. You understand the etiquette, you understand what you're supposed to do, you understand where to stand. Um, and so I thought it was a really, really good experience for me to, if I wasn't acting, um, just to watch others. And Because you always learn as an actor, you know, you're mm-hmm. never the finished product. And especially not at 18, you know. Aye, of course, of course, it's a constant learning experience. Much, I suppose you could apply that to life in general. It's a constant learning experience. Um, is there anything else that you did learn, uh, not just only in your acting side of things, but personally, and what any tr- character traits it brought out in you uh, by the end of the shoot? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think um, it struck me how <coughs> it struck me how similar I was to my character. Um, I, I feel I'm very similar to Callum, you know, there was a lot I could relate to, Mm -hmm. um, which I think was tough because it meant I had to highlight, uh, as an actor, I had to highlight things that were different so I could play on them more. You know, I I couldn't, I couldn't go in front of the camera and just be Patrick. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to think of things that Callum did and what, what, what it was for Callum. Mm -hmm. Um, and I suppose at at 18, you know, shooting a film personally, I learned that that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I, I, I I do want to be an actor. It confirmed that because I had such a great time. I just think, there's not. I, I had such a good time on set. You know, I can't imagine myself seeing anything else. Um, I, I would do it all over again. But I don't think there's going to be a sequel. Well, you don't think there's going to be a sequel? <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, you never know. They might have Blackbird two in the works by 2016 or 2017, <laughs> for all you know. So, 
Um, of course. Um, so obviously it's been a very uh, enlightening experience for yourself and moving f forward from the, the shoot, as it were, to the present. Uh, of course, we've got this um, film, uh, the film premiering on Wednesday. Uh, you looking forward to it? I know it's a bit of an obvious question, but are you looking forward to the premiere? Oh, I'm buzzing. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, the biggest dilemma Andy and I are facing just now is what to wear. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, so if that's all you've got to worry about, you, you know you're going to have a good time. You might be decisive in other things, but there's nothing like a debate on what you wear to a premiere. No, absolutely not. And I've not seen a full run of Blackbird yet. You know, the craziest thing about Tuesday is that um, I'll be um, I'll be watching it for the first time, you know, and uh, I might be rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so... I wouldn't like to. I, I wouldn't like to comment on that. But um, yeah, certainly I can't, I can't wait to see the film. And I know just from from watching the people act and like given the talent of the director mm -hmm. and the editor and the producer, you know, I think it, I think we'll have something really special. I'm pretty sure it won't be. You won't be rubbish at all. I'm pretty sure about that. 100 <laughs> percent certain. Um, but uh, so it's gonna. You so you may think it's gonna feel different and a bit maybe. A, in a way strange to seeing yourself on the screen maybe perhaps well i've seen myself on screen before you know um through studying acting and doing various kind of low budget short films and things like that but certainly for on the on the very big screen um in a film you know it's going to be a very very weird experience um but hopefully the first of many so after the uh, after the screenings are you preparing your autograph book and maybe a personal assistant maybe uh, i think my mum might well, not autograph, that's about it. <laughs> Where next for Patrick Wallace, the actor? Where next? Well, um, good question. Um, well, I'm, I've am i finished my last year at Edinburgh Napier University um, doing acting for stage and screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and as part of that, we have to put on a play in Edinburgh Fringe. So myself and two other lads are, um, are currently sourcing plays and having a chat about that so we can put that on next year. Um, I'm working with the National Theatre of Scotland in October um, with Antonine by David Gregg, which is my National Theatre debut. So that should be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but no, just keeping busy. Um, still learning, but ready to go when I finish uni. And uh, I suppose whilst we're here, I can't really not ask you this question. Uh, how street light? <laughs> um, pretty quiet at the moment. You know, we're all in different places. Um, but we still all get on very well, and hopefully maybe we'll have a reunion gig pretty soon. First of all, uh, thanks very much for coming on to Radio West Fife. And secondly, I would like to wish on behalf of myself and the station as well, and uh, our, our listeners as well, as uh, we wish you all the best with uh, Blackbird and your endeavours in, in the future coming months. Well, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. There we go. That was Patrick Wallace speaking to me earlier today uh, about uh, Blackbird that's uh, screening at the Edinburgh International Film Festival uh, this coming week. And it's, of course, a co-production between Deerstalker Films and Transgressive North as well. And I'll give you an idea of, of how quickly the uh, tickets had sold out in the Scotsman for the uh, top 10 most anticipated films at the festival. It came in at number three.